Hey everyone, today we're going to talk a bit about honing our straight razors on softer Japanese natural stones um, and how we can try to get the best edges off of them. Originally I was going to save this topic for a larger video, uh, eventually I was going to put together regarding stone progressions versus nagara progressions for, for razors or knives, but um, this is not exactly what is normally advocated. We don't, we don't usually tell people to go out and get a softer 3 uh, to 3.5 Japanese natural stone for razor work, um, nowadays at least. And I felt that because of, uh, because of that fact, it maybe made more sense to have a separate video for it. So before we jump on into actually using these things and uh, maybe some of the slurry techniques which will get you the best edge possible, uh, we'll talk a little bit about why you might run across these stones being uh, touted as, as a razor stone, um, how it might come into your possession, and, and why the market has changed on what qualifies as a razor stone. So uh, back in the you know pre-1970s, um, soft Japanese natural stone was the stone primarily used by barbers uh, to hone their razors. If you think about the market today, we normally advocate people get a 4.5 hardness to a 5 plus hardness stone to finish their razors on. So it feels maybe um, a little confusing as to why they would have been seeking out soft stone. And we have to take a few things into consideration uh, when we consider that. The first is that there were no synthetic stones at the time. Uh, so to take those off the table. The second is that there were no diamond nagara or diamond plates at the time either. So uh, you were someone trying to run a, a barber business and you needed a stone that worked and it meant that you could not easily lap flat nor generate the slurry from a super hard, super fine stone. Uh, when you consider those qualities and uh, you're using it as a tool, having to deal with all of those negatives for maybe a minorly better edge uh, was not going to be worth it. So the majority of the market sought out these softer Japanese natural stones, which were fine enough to still finish on, uh, but were very workable, were very easy to pull up slurry on, were easy to keep flat. So there was a, a lot more usability to the stone from someone's perspective during that time frame. <clears throat> now, um, these stones, interestingly enough, were also what uh, made Iwasaki generate uh, the Nagara progression, or at least look into it and identify it, not uh, to get away from them in particular, but because he foresaw them on the market at the time, eventually running out. That there was a, a surplus of very hard, very fine stones, which you could get for very cheap, um, except that these uh, softer stones were going to continue to have high demand and eventually would become harder and far more expensive to use. Now, um, that led us to the, uh, you know, uh, Mikawa Asano progression that is, is still very popular to this day in the, in the straight razor world. Um, now, two things did change since then, uh, which maybe proved uh, or altered what his prediction was going to be and then changed the reality we live in. The first is the diamond plate which is a key factor in unlocking a lot of the potential for those super hard stones, both in keeping them flat and uh, generating that base slurry. And second uh, was the advent of synthetic stones, that all of a sudden uh, there was not this, you know, industry-wide pull for Japanese natural stones. Uh, the majority of them switched to synthetic stones, which then meant that the even the current stop we're, stop we're using today of these softer, more usable stones are, are still available to us. So um, that gives you a little bit of a background as to why maybe if you're bidding on a, a old barber hone Japanese natural stone uh, and you get it, and then you find it's very soft, that could be confusing. So that gives you uh, the knowledge you need to at least understand why your stone might be soft, uh, why they would have wanted soft stones, and as such uh, leads us to, to taking a look at them. They are definitely very usable. Uh, you can get still a very nice shaving edge off of them, and I would argue that they are uh, going to give you an edge comparable to 
Still, the better codicils, the better Thuringians, uh, Charnley Forest Hones, Arkansas Hones, uh, I think that it, they can keep pace with all of those, and I mean, there is a difference uh, between them and those very fine, uh, harder Japanese natural stones, but uh, it's not a usable uh, issue difference. You can get a perfectly usable razor on each, just when you're comparing the two, you, you may feel the difference at that point. Um, at least that's that's my experience and opinion, but I, I do think it's shared by the majority of the market. Otherwise, you'd see people saying, hey, this is what you need are these soft stones. So anyway, uh, moving on to the actual stones themselves, not all stones are going to be able to be used for razors. Uh, I would argue the vast majority of them can be used for razors, especially if they lean more into the 3.5 area. Uh, and you're gonna ask yourself, of course, like, well, how do I determine if a softer Japanese natural stone can also do my razor? Um, you, you usually nowadays would get these stones for knife sharpening or knife polishing but hey, you might have the stone already, you might have a razor, you know, hey, can I use it? Um, the first way to determine this is to use the stone, is to try it um, and see how it goes. That sounds like an obvious answer, but uh, that is always the best answer, is just, just try what you got and see how it comes out. Um, that does not typically satisfy people, or hey, you might be looking at buying a stone which can do all of the things for you, and uh, you might want to know, there's a stone that leans maybe in the four area, which is still usually a little below razor category. Uh, could that still work for us um, with razors and then knives and then polishing and so on and so forth? So um, I do think there are ways that we can tell that uh, without using a razor and without feeling the edge. So if you're, if you're talking to a vendor or collector or something, uh, you can get actually a lot of information about the stone, <clears throat> not by looking at it for razors, but by looking at it for knife polishing. And most vendors selling uh, Japanese natural stone will be able to show you the finish that it leaves on a knife. Uh, so if we take a look at our, a knife here, a clad knife, uh, you'll notice that we have the soft steel, um, the soft cladding, up at the top here, uh, and then we have the more uh, mirror hard core steel at the bottom. How these steels react to uh, the stone when you're polishing it can tell you a lot about uh, the, the stone and how it's going to perform with your razor. Now, your razor's metal is going to be a lot more much more akin to this core steel, the, the more mirror colored steel uh, down at the bottom, not the cladding. So that's primarily what we're looking at. However, how the cladding reacts still does tell us a lot. Um, the more mirror the cladding is, uh, the more mirror the clad is, likely the more fine and hard the stone is. And then it's similarly how mirror the core steel at the bottom is, the finer the stone is. Um, so I have three of my softer stones out here today. Uh, this is a uh, Suida, uh, likely a Shiro Suida. It was technically sold to me as Uchigamori, but I kind of don't believe it. So um, this is a very soft stone and is soft and coarse to the point of not being a satisfactory finisher. Um, it's a very nice pre-finisher, uh, if you want to use that term, it does a really great job of setting us up for a harder finishing stone, but it itself, I think, is a little too coarse, not due to its softness, but due to the particles within. Uh, these two, uh, this is like a 3 out of 5. This one is like a 3 to a 3.5 out of 5, and is just uh, fine enough, in my opinion, to finish on. It would not be my first choice to finish on, but I think this is probably pretty close to uh, a old Japanese barber hone. You know, if you got one off of Bai or eBay or whatever, and that's where its origin was, I think this is what it's gonna come out a lot like. Um, usually a little smaller and thinner, but still the same quality. This one over here um, is probably would have been a like prized possession barber hone, I would say. It is still soft. Uh, 3.5 to 4 range um, and very workable, but it is a super fine stone, um, not 
not insanely fine, but it is uh, definitely a step up from this. And the shaves I get off of this stone um, are very nice and uh, definitely can compete with my my best super hard stones. So this really takes maybe the cake in, in versatility. Um, so I will try to go ahead and show the polish off of these three as an example. I'm not uh, going to spend a lot of time on that topic. I really want to get more into the slurry control and how maybe that differs a little bit from a regular super hard stone. Um, but uh, given that this is a way you can ask a vendor or a collector to show you the stone, it might help you have a better idea of things. I think it's uh, worthy to cover in this, even if you're a razor only user and you're, you're not going to be someone who polishes your knives. So we'll start with this, this guy here. Uh, this is a Ohira Suida, and again, I think that it is a, having looked at many other stones, I think it is a Shiro Suida, the actual strata, though those are usually known for being very hard. This one is very soft, so uh, it's very difficult to tell um, beyond speculation if you aren't getting from a super reputable vendor, and, and I <clears throat> got this from a private collector, so uh, who, who really knows? definitely a Sweeta, and I do think it's an Ohira. That's as far as I can promise. So, all right, um, what we will see here is not the best polished job, but I'm just going to go ahead and give us something to take a look at. And what we'll see, at least what we should see here, hopefully the camera shows it well enough, is um, a fairly hazy look to our uh, core steel. Let me see how close I can get this for you guys. So hopefully you have a better idea um, and of course, it still looks pretty mirrorish, but uh, there's a, a cloudiness to it that isn't what we want. And to me, that shows that we're looking at a stone, a, a soft stone, which is not just soft, but the particles inside are just a little coarser than we would want for a razor. Um, I could shave off of this if I needed to, uh, but it's not going to be pleasant, right? You're not going to seek it out. And even I would be surprised if they had looked at this back in the day and said, yeah, this is a really great razor stone. Um, I don't think that is what its purpose is. I, I suspect people would have agreed. So next we'll go ahead and take a look at this one. Um, there's still a chance that the core steel will have a bit of haze to it, but um, and, and such a nuance might be harder to pick up in videos. I do think pictures are a lot easier to get the detail you want, uh, but we should still see a marked reduction in that haze um, to a, a very good actual reflective finish. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And as you can see this doesn't take me a long time. It's not particularly hard to do. Um, if you're working with a vendor and they are unwilling to do this for you, so you can see the qualities of the stone, uh, I would consider finding another vendor. So let's take a look here. see it. But uh, in person, and oh, I think on the camera here, let's go ahead and get you guys a closer shot. Uh, there is definitely less haze going on on that core steel. Um, I'm not sure the best way to try to show that, but uh, it is a clear finish. It's still not mirror, like, you know, if I try to reflect the light off of it on my end. 
Um, you know, what I one of the things I like to do is <clears throat> I got the light bulb just right up here, and uh, I should be able to easily make out some of the qualities of the of the light. And you can even take a picture. Obviously, I can't right now, but uh, you can put a computer screen up or something and have them take a picture of the reflection. And we'll show you a lot more of that haziness to mirror quality that we're talking about here. So uh, this is um, a good enough, is how I would generally try to say it, uh, finish for what we're looking for. Um, all right. And uh, I don't the fin the slurry here can sometimes be hard to tell, but it, it came up a mixture. If it was a lot more muddy, you might be more concerned about it. Uh, it typically indicates the stone isn't cutting as well, and the binder's coming up really easily. Uh, but there's some pages on my website if you want to read through that more, and that's, that's not the purpose of this video, isn't to go over super muddy versus not muddy stones. So last we'll go ahead and take a look at this. Um, oh, I forgot to say, if you care. This is a Iwatani, Iwatani, um, uh, Tomai. Uh, Kita color. Kita color. Anyway, so this one is another Iwatani, and it is a uh, Namato Strata, which is maybe one of the reasons it is finer, but uh, there's never a rule. There's no rules that tell you, oh, it's from the Namato Strata, it's going to be particularly fine. You really uh, have to try them as they come, so... Let's go ahead and take a look. If you want to test this yourself, you do need a knife that has a decently flat bevel, but I'm not going for a world-class finish here. It's going to be uneven. There's going to be low spots. I'm just using a tester knife that I have because it doesn't it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to show us that difference. Um, so once again, it might be hard. The cladding is a little bit more frosty is usually the word people will use for that. Um, it's definitely a bit more reflective in person. I could, if I was taking a picture as a vendor, I could get a better image uh, off of that reflection for you. And let's go ahead and see if I can get you guys a closer picture here. Similarly, I mean, I hope at 4K, just the video, you can make out some differences in it, but uh, that could be hard. And the differences between this and the previous stone are still only so large. Um, if I worked it for longer, I, I would still get more detail, but Really, we're just looking for that haze, and the haze does not take long to develop um, on this type of knife. So, uh, that's how you might be able to look at it on your own. Try to make that distinction about, hey, I want a soft stone that can kind of do every, or I want a softer stone that can kind of do everything. How do I ask a vendor to show me that the stone that they have could work for me? Um, and, or a collector, you know, whoever you're getting your stone from or trading it for. That's how I would do it, is I would, I would look at that cladding, I would look at how it finishes the core steel, and um, look for the non-hazy quality to it. And uh, the more, the less hazy the core steel is, the more silvery, frosty the cladding is, and the more reflective the cladding is, uh, mirror reflecting, um, the more likely the softer stone will do razors for you very well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, 3 to 3.5 stone and actually uh, get some honing time on it. So let's go ahead and swap this out. And I could use the Namato that we just came off of, but uh, I don't... The whole point of this is to try to cover what the stones might be like if uh, you go and buy one of those, again, quote unquote, old Japanese barber hones. And I, I don't think they're going to normally be as fine as the Namito is. They're going to usually be a Tomai stone like this. They are, 
Let's go ahead and make sure this is in focus. All right. They're going to be a Tomai stone by average. Uh, most stones are Tomai stones, just so much more of them are produced. And they're going to be a little softer, so I think this is a better representation. So first, uh, we're going to go ahead and just, I like to usually coat the stones in water a little bit. I would normally give them 30, 20, 30 seconds of just time to make sure it's hydrated, but we, we used this a little while ago, so we should be good to go. I'm using a diamond plate. Uh, you could use a nagra, but um, I generally am a advocate for diamond plates, um, and I think they are the superior way to go. In this case, I'm using an Atoma, uh, Atoma, Atoma diamond plate uh, that is 1200 grit, and it is a bit worn in, uh, not drastically so. So since it's not that worn in, we're gonna just put it on the surface and uh, we don't wanna press down that might uh, too, generate too much slurry or scratch the top of the stone. Uh, we don't want that if we can avoid it. So I just grab it um, by this. If you were using it like a plate, you could just grab a corner or do something like this, you know, where it's gonna limit your ability to put a lot of pressure on the stone. The difference between, especially with soft stones, the difference between pressure and no pressure to generate the slurry, as we're gonna see, is maybe 10, 15 more seconds. Um, you can wait 10 to 15 more seconds and just do it the right way rather than having to, to rush through it. So I'm trying to avoid using the handle since I think most people will not have the handle version. So you'll see that um, the uh, I'm generating quite a bit of slurry here. Usually I might not generate so much slurry for a finer stone. For a finer stone, um, this would maybe be too much slurry. However, because this stone is a, because this stone is a softer stone, we're going to generate a little bit more slurry because it's going to play into how we will um, use it. So I have this uh, nice little Daishi razor here to do some testing with. Uh, it's a little tiny guy, but it will serve our purposes just to show you how to work the surface some, and uh, we can get started. So this is pretty dried out. I don't want to this dry, but I'm not shooting for milky. Usually that's what you'll hear for stones is uh, you want a milky slurry um, and you want it to be uh, not a super thick slurry. With these softer stones, you want a bit more slurry and you want it to be not as watery. Now, that might seem counterintuitive, uh, but there is a reason for it. So this is, we're gonna start working it and uh, it's still actually a little watery, but that's fine. The benefit of the softer stone is that it's going to start chilling that water out, you know, sucking some of it up for us. So why do we want this more slurry? Well, with these softer stones, we're playing a different game. Harder stones are kind of encouraging the surface to try to give you more grit. Um, softer stones, we don't want the surface Continually, continually refreshing itself. It's going to already refresh itself. So we want to um, give a lot of lubrication to the blade and avoid a constant refresh of the grit. Um, we want to work the binder down. We want to work the surface a little down before it gives us that new grit. So stop talking so you can hear it a little bit. This is exactly what we're looking for. Um, is you can see it's wet still, but it's starting to give up the wet ghost here. We've dried over here, and it's very fine and very smooth. Now, if I had this milkier and more milk consistency, would not be as smooth. <clears throat> it would be refreshing a whole lot more and it would uh, be cutting the edge differently with a bit more of a coarse behavior. And it's fine to work this until you really start 
getting to that edge of no more water. And when we want to add water, it's a little bit. We don't drench it. And you'll see we can, re we can get back to where we were. So how long do you do this? Up to you. Depends on how your razor was finished before. What was your preceding stone? How much work does it need? Um, there's never really a super clear answer. Maybe I skimmed a little too much before. Um, there's never a super clear answer on right how many laps do you do, how, so on and so forth. It, per razor, per situation, changes everything. Um, I tend to go off of the feel of the blade, or I'll look at it under a loop. Go from there. So I'll try to give just a little bit of time to try and hear the stone. And I feel like you can tell when you hit that middle, that, that not middle ground, but where you really want it, because you'll start seeing your side here dry up. But your main working area doesn't. And it gives you what you're really looking for, which is that nice, fine, a bit dried out, but not dry uh, slurry on the top, which is giving you that, a lot of lubrication, very fine, silky feeling. You can see how the slurry acts differently. The pulls. Usually, this would be right on the area where you'd start putting more water on. However, our softer stones act differently. They hold water differently. Their slurry holds water differently. We can work it a lot longer without adding that water back than we would with one of our harder stones. And that gives us our key to not overworking their surface and releasing too much new grit. And that's how we go ahead and get that finer edge, which is a very usable edge for razors. Something else which might be different for you is um, this amount of slurry on the surface will probably not show you much of the metal you're cutting. Um, if you're someone who uses more like more watery slurry with the finer stones, might be used to seeing your slurry change a bit of colors. And this one is doing a little color changing, but you're just dealing with a bit more of a concentration. You can see it's just starting to group up a bit more and you're going to keep more of that main stone color for longer. All right, so I'm gonna call it there. Uh, probably would go for longer if the stone was uh, anything, or sorry, if the razor was anything more than needing a touch up, but uh, it, it does not. It was just a, a razor I grabbed for the express purpose of, uh, express purpose of just covering this with you guys. So, Hopefully uh, that showed you guys a bit of what to do. I don't have any hairs here to do the hanging hair test, but it you know, goes through my uh, arm hair just fine. And uh, you can spend more time on it. It will continue to refine some. I do wish I had the ability to show you guys through a loop what it looks like, but you get a, I'm trying my best with the camera I got, you do get a very nice 
edge still. I don't know if that was worth anything. Probably not. So anyway, um, some questions that might come up after you watch it is, yeah, I taped the spine. I don't like the spines wearing away. Um, this is actually an asymmetrical grind, uh, kind of like a Kamasuri. When it has the Western scales, you call it a Kataha. So this is a Kataha style razor. Um, if you take a look, hopefully that shows. It uh, has a asymmetrical grind on it. So you do more on one side than the other. I do three, one, constant debate about what is the correct amount. Yeah, you figure that out for yourself if you care. And uh, the last thing is a lot of people are naysayers of touching the toe um, of the razor. I barely touch it. I'm not putting any pressure over here. Uh, but I do like to do it for reassurance that the whole blade is touching on the way down. I don't do X strokes. Um, what I talked about here, it doesn't really matter how you're going to move the blade on the surface. Uh, you choose the style that you like best. Axe method, X strokes, figure eights, circles, whatever, whatever you like. Um, the same will be true about how the stone acts, how the slurry will perform for you. So... I uh, hope you guys found that useful or informative if you're one of those people who got a older Japanese barber hone and you are curious why uh, it is performing as it is, so, so soft, and how do you make the best use of it. Or if you're someone who is just uh, looking to maybe try to get the most versatile stone possible so you can do some polishing, some sharpening. Uh, this will give you some guidance on how you can use it if you, if you lean on the softer side of things. For a versatile stone, I still would tend to recommend you look at, at a 4 to a 4.5 or a 4 plus, whatever they, uh, some people will use that designation. Because um, I think that will do everything better, easier, more like the Namato stone. But um, these can still work as long as you can kind of get some proof that the stone is fine enough to be able to do all the jobs you want. So anyway, uh, if you have any suggestions for other videos, let me know. I do have some others in the work and some in mind to do, but uh, it, it takes a little bit of time to set this aside and get it all set up, so they come out slow. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and I will see you all later.